This is the Sony PSP, one of the best gaming handhelds ever made. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what made it so special. And I'm also going to be fixing this particular one up because it is pretty scuffed. Let's jump right in. When the PlayStation Portable came out here in the United States in 2005, it was a highly anticipated device. Not only was it supposed to be a competitor to the original Nintendo DS, but it also promised to offer a lot of what the original PlayStation and PlayStation 2 had to offer in terms of titles, graphics, etc., but in your pocket. Now, this might be my rose-tinted nostalgia goggles talking, but I do think that the PSP by the end of its life cycle did offer a lot of what Sony was promising and then some. I personally had a lot of fond memories as a kid playing Need for Speed Underground and Gran Turismo on this thing, especially since those were games that I played in my living room on my PS2 but could play them on the go even if they weren't quite the full version. However, more than anything else, growing up as a young tech enthusiast, I really loved just how much of a multimedia device the PSP really was. This right here is the PSP 3000, which came out a couple of years after the initial launch and compared to the original console, brought in a couple of improvements, namely with a brighter screen, a more streamlined design, and most importantly, more RAM in terms of performance. However, for this particular unit, it's been sitting around in the office for quite a while. In fact, I don't remember why we even got it, or even the condition of it for that matter, apart from the fact that cosmetically, it has seen better days. There is a battery in here. I don't know if it's charged, but let's see if it even powers on. Oh, well, we got a power light. Ooh, the screen turns on. Ah yes, the good old XMV. Still holds up today, man. Seriously, one of the best interfaces Sony has ever made, more so than the PS4 and even the PS5. They really should go back to this old design. Now looking at the actual screen, there are a fair few surface scratches, though the panel itself is looking nice, which is good to see. But this body has certainly seen better days. There's a bunch of paint chipping over here, and the back has a lot of scrapes. This thing has taken quite a few falls over the years, for sure. Hell, even the plastic side rail is missing a piece, and some of our buttons definitely don't feel as springy as they used to. This circle button feels particularly flat, and the shoulder buttons have a little bit of crust to them. So we're gonna have to replace a good amount of this PSP, but I think it is a good platform to start with. Now let's see if the UMD drive functions well, if at all. I think I just set the UMD in and close it. Oh, it's spinning up. It's making some laser noises, but uh, oh yeah, look at that. It works totally fine. And because this particular console is a Japanese model, the X and circle buttons are inverted for the interface. So to select, I have to hit circle, but that's totally fine because in theory, I believe these are region free. So it should be able to play my US version of Need for Speed Underground Rivals fine. Oh, making some loud ass noises though. Some squeaks. Is that normal? I mean, the game's running. I remember back in the day with my original PSP 1000 that the disk drive made a lot of noise, but man, I do not remember it being that loud. That's something I'll have to look into as well, though I'm sure it's fine if the game is reading. Woo! This works totally fine. Yep, D-pad works well, X works well. Yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty good. Let's play some Underground Rivals real quick. Oh yeah, this plays totally fine. Woo! Yeah, no, this is, this is good, okay. But yeah, while this console might not look the best, it certainly functions fine. So it will be a good base to do some refurbishing and maybe even some mods as well. So let me order some parts, figure out what I wanna actually do, and let's jump ahead to actually refurbishing this thing. Several months later. All right, so all of my parts came in from AliExpress. They're all splayed out on the table. Let's just get started with tearing down our PSP and properly refurbishing it. Now I could just wing it tearing down this console, but I found a helpful tutorial in my research for this video. I'll link it in the description. And I'm probably going to need it because there are some finicky bits that are probably fine to just dive in blind, but better safe than sorry, especially since I want to do this right, considering that 
Some of my other projects haven't turned out quite so well. The reason is not powering on anymore. And I think it's because I accidentally snagged one of the ribbon cables. Let's just dive right in here. So at least the first part seems pretty easy. Just a couple of screws gets our faceplate and stuff off. Whenever I do these teardowns, I feel like I always end up with a few extra screws than when I started, which isn't a good thing because then that means I didn't exactly put everything all together as nature intended. Outer screws are undone. And next up is a screw that's under the battery, though I guess someone had already gotten into this console because there are no screws back here. So now I'm wondering what the actual quality of this PSP is. Maybe Austin had worked on this thing before or something. So this faceplate does actually come off fairly easily, though I will be careful because there are things like foam seals, I think, that go around our screen, which we want to keep intact because I think we're gonna try to transplant some of these onto our replacement parts. And I also don't wanna break anything either. Even though most of, especially our shell, is not going to be used again, it would be nice to just preserve what I can in case we do actually need it down the line. What is holding you captive, sir? Oh, I'm dumb. Maybe you should undo all of the screws first before you uh, assume that the console could be torn apart. So that wasn't all of the outer screws. I missed two of them because I'm just dumb. All right, now, we are free, and that all came apart very easily. That is an open PSP. So again, what I want to do with this PSP is replace more or less everything that isn't the core PCB. I'm gonna to have to really tear apart this whole entire thing bit by bit in order to make that happen. So let's just do it and carefully, so I don't break anything. I'm gonna get some tweezers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is separate our home row buttons, which apparently just unclip. Oh yeah, it's kind of coming off. Okay. Okay. This is not boding well for me if I can't even do this most basic step this early in. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's one side. Or is there, this is actually screwed in. Yeah, it was 100% screwed in, there we go. And so our home row buttons are completely off. I'm gonna set this to the side. We're gonna have a lot of components splayed out very quickly, so I'm going to try to organize as best as I can. I guess I can also take this time to remove our face buttons as well. It's always interesting to see how these things work because it's basically just some membrane and buttons and they just touch on a point that's closer to the board here. Looks like our shoulder buttons also naturally fell off, so I'm just gonna take these off. Not gonna lie, when I opened this up, things just started falling. Maybe I should be worried that the console's falling apart this easily. Maybe the person that opened this up did not take the best care when they did it, so. From here, it also looks like I can take off our screen, which is just on with a flex cable. So as long as I don't kink them or anything in a weird way, I think, this process should be fairly straightforward. This is a very small device and therefore a lot of components that need to, do, to be finagled in here. All right, so our screen is off. Um, Cool, oh man, this ribbon cable I think belonged to our home row, so that's unfortunate. It didn't stay with our home row and I don't know if I'll be able to put that together. So far, things seem to go pretty smoothly. And as always with these teardowns, it's nice to see how even the simplest parts work. Oh, that's really cool. So I'm actually seeing how they did the power switch on the PSP. So it's actually this very, very small PCB that's connected via a flex cable to our motherboard. And there's a physical switch here that's spring loaded. Yeah, that is a very tiny board. <laughs> power switch is out. We're gonna put this on our right side. In fact, I'm gonna put this with our organizer here so I don't lose it. And then I have to take apart the actual power connector here. I don't think we have to actually take this out, but it's probably so more so that it's out of the way. Ooh, nice. Our power connector is free. Put all of our power stuff in there. There are so many flex cables, man. So this is where our triangle square circle X buttons touch to make an input. And uh, apparently this whole thing comes off, but we have to be careful to not kink it. Cool. 
Easy. Oh, that's so interesting. So not only is it for the front facing buttons, but it's also for our shoulder as well. That's quite nice. Wow. Okay, so I think this is our Wi-Fi. At least it's a Wi-Fi-ish looking connector. So that seems like it'll be very easy to just take off. There's all this stuff on the left as well. Oh, that's what this is. It's our memory stick door. So it was missing the plastic piece on the side. I thought that was just the housing. Oh yeah, so yeah, of course, this had a memory stick already in it. Oh, it had a micro SD adapter with a 32 gig card in it. I had bought one thinking that I was using the internal memory. Cool, well, I have two of these now. To be fair, it has been a while since I've actually interacted with a PSP to begin with, so. Okay, so all of this seemingly just kind of comes off. There's a flex cable over here that I should be careful to not f up. Boom. Hell yeah. Okay, so this will possibly make our reassembly a little easier. At what point can I take out this whole middle core? Awesome. So this ribbon cable over here that I just took off is for our UMD drive, which I am going to replace. We'll see how easy or laborious that is. I'm probably leaning toward the ladder because we do have to get our soldering kit out as you will see in a moment. But again, since I'm tearing it into pieces anyway, there's no reason not to. Because we want to replace not only the outer shell of our PSP, but also our incredibly scuffed chassis, we have to unmount literally everything from the console. That said, apart from even more encounters with my personal kryptonite, also has a flex cable, god damn it, and a little bit of destruction. Well, it doesn't matter if I break it because we're replacing it anyway. Well, I bent that whole piece of plastic, but again, we don't need it. The process was more or less straightforward. Hello? Okay, well, I was following the tutorial, but sometimes I don't do that. Huh. Is it supposed to do that? Oh, uh, was it supposed to do that? I think this is the speaker. I just took out the speaker. Was I supposed to do that? Uh, oh, I see. Okay, so these leaf style connectors actually make contact with these two connectors on our board, which is really neat. I will take that as a cautionary tale to hug the tutorial even more as we go down further in the process. <sighs> wow, look at that. That is our whole PSP motherboard, or at least most of it. Yeah, that is pretty small, I'd say. Next, I needed to take off the UMD door on the back. How? Which so far is looking to be the most labor intensive part. It involves removing itty bitty pieces of plastic and metal, which will absolutely be a pain to put back in. But then I realized something. Do I actually have to do all of this? I certainly have to take out my Wi-Fi board, which I think this is what that is. But other other than that, this can just stay on the old assembly and I could just put my new drive on the new shell and save myself some time. So I guess now is a better time than ever to take a look at some of our transplant parts. So here is our UMD drive, which I'll get to in a moment, but also we should probably take a look at our donor shell. Okay, so we will have to transplant a lot of the old assembly from our old donor PSP, like the spring for the door and whatnot. But yeah, this don't look too bad. First things first, we need to take out the UMD door. <gasps> there we go. Okay, 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 okay. We're good, we're free. And I guess we start transplanting stuff back in. So the main thing I have to do right now is get this new UMD drive mounted onto the core of our new PSP shell kit. But before I jump in and do that, something to note when you do a proper drive replacement is there is an anti-static solder joint usually on these things from the get-go. And it is crucial for you to take this off before you properly plug all of this in to your old hardware. Otherwise, the drive itself won't work. Now, in order for me to do this, I need to clear some space and grab our soldering stuff because otherwise that solder joint is not gonna come off. Okay, so I have my soldering station here. I'm gonna heat it up. But the idea behind what I'm doing here is fairly simple. Essentially, we just have to desolder this anti-static joint over here and that is it. So what is the problem? proper way of doing this without a proper soldering surface. Um, 
What is the lesser of evils? I don't think I should do it on the mouse pad because that'll definitely light on fire. I'm tempted to say I'm going to do it on the wood. I'm going to do it on the wood. We went from following the rules to pure chaos in a matter of seconds. Again, kids, do as I say, not as I do. Um, this is a bad idea. Here goes nothing. Let's uh, hope to God this works. Oh, wait, that was quick. That was very quick. Oh, it did it. It did it. It did it. It did it. Um, I might need to do a little more. That's very hard to see on camera, but it actually just picked up all of the solder there. And I think I might have to do a little bit more, but uh, we are close. We are close. Wow. I think that's it. Let me examine the work. And the best reference point I have is the actual drive that came on our original PSP. I mean, that looks the same. Okay, I mean, I don't know if it works yet because we haven't exactly tested it, but that looks pretty much the same. Either this was really easy or something went horribly wrong. How bad can it be? How desoldered does it actually have to be? Oh. No, 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 I, I, I see I see the difference, I see the difference. It is very hard to get, in fact, I'm just gonna take a photo of this on my iPhone with a macro lens. So you can actually see on the flex connector, there are a bunch of different lines which run to the pins at the end of the flex connector. And the desolder joint essentially acts as a wall to stop the signal going through to the end of the connector, which means in order for it to work, you need to see the line flat out, make it from one end of the cable to the other, through the joint, which now that I'm looking at it is not quite there. So let me do a little more work here. That might be it. That might be it. Uh, that looks like a straight line. I'm gonna do one more. It's more of a sanity check. Yeah, I think I'll call that good. Ideally you're using a magnifying glass for this, but I have very good eyes even though I'm wearing glasses. Yeah, dude, I think we did it. We didn't need those fancy tools at all. I'm feeling confident with this. The hard stuff is out of the way. The rest of it is just putting back what I tore apart. Uh, I'm feeling happy now, but watch it not work. Watch it not work. <laughs> Cautious optimism aside, I pushed along. The UMD door was a pain to sort out as expected, but eventually I figured it out. I put our motherboard back into place, all of the cables and connectors for our power as well as the buttons. Honestly, it felt as straightforward as the teardown itself. Sort of these stupid ribbon cables again. Okay, well maybe that wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. That's what she said. Okay, 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 cool. And down. Sick. <laughs> And the final cable before we move on to the next step is the UMD drive flex cable, which actually doesn't look too bad because the cable is quite large. Gotta like wiggle it in, make sure that it's properly seated. You could do a little test. And that is in there, my friends, yes. All right, the hard stuff is finally past us. It's time to just put our head down and get the reassembly really going. Eventually, I got our screen and the power all reconnected. Though, before I sprint to the finish, let's plug in our AC adapter and check our work to make sure that the screen is all good. And turn it on. Oh, we got a light. Okay, that's not good. We have some, uh, some screen issues there, which are most certainly my doing. We know that the PSP works, just not optimally. What is wrong here? What, uh, what, what, what I do? What I do? I am quite scared. I mean, I did put a little bit of pressure on the flex cable, but not much. It can't be that bad, right? Okay, we'll try it one more time. So at least we know that our power button works. Our screen up. I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. Like they only cost like $15, which I mean, it sucks that I have to buy another one, but uh, really? What could have possibly went wrong? I mean, it's not like I'm the most careful person, but I did try to baby it a little bit. What happened here? <laughs> Not to remedy the screen, but while I'm here and testing things, I'm gonna take out our new set of buttons because if I'm gonna be ordering some extra spare parts, I should at least look into what is actually working for me right now. So I'm gonna put our membrane buttons on here. Okay, so they do work. Testing the directional pad, totally fine as well. So the transplant worked as intended. We'll obviously get the placement of these things actually right, but it's good to see that that stuff works. The main thing I need to do now is get a new screen for this guy. There's a part of me that's impatient and wants to finish 
this part of the project today. Let's go on, let's go on a journey. <laughs> so as no surprise to probably no one, Overclock Media has a bunch of PlayStations. Hopefully we have a PSP 3000 here that I could use to help the cause, which is to fix my PSP. I'm gonna try to see what's inside of this one here. Maybe this could be our donor. Survey says, not gonna lie, that's actually kind of all right. Mmm, mmm. Is Austin here? Hello. Hi, I have a question. At this point, I want Boss Man to bite if I have any shot of finishing this today. After all, it already took my components a month to show up. I don't have another month to work on this video. Woo! No. Before before you jump oh, to you didn't mod that one. That's the one we already have that you want to tear apart right now because you broke it. Did I get it right the first time? Partially, yes. What'd you break? I need a new screen. Why? So the screen that I have on it right now, uh -huh. the one that we fixed, yeah. is if we're going by pixels, is half working. So you've had half your pixels working. Yes. Couldn't you just buy like a third party, nicer, upgraded LCD display? Yes. Are you too lazy to wait for Amazon to show up with prime shipping with that display? Yes. So instead, you're gonna tear apart a perfectly good PSP just to steal the screen out of it? Yes. That's your pitch? Tell him he's wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong and you're dumb. He wants to tear apart a PSP because he broke a screen, so he wants another screen. Wow. Oh, it's so easy. I'll just be able to do it's it. Easy. It's easy. It's super easy. I don't need any help. As it stands, yep. it is all in. So this is the original display? This is the original display. Yeah. Did it as best as I could. I mean- Are you sure it's fully seated in there? I reseated it twice and it does the same exact thing. I'll show you what it does. Oh, it's like interlace. Yeah. I, I, as I said, half my pixels work. Ship it, why not? Ship, what, what do you mean ship well, how it? How do you know that, but how do you know it's a screen though? Is because look at, the, look at the bottom. The bottom's fine. Oh no, yeah, well. I, I'll tell you as someone that has used this for at least an hour, I'll tell you that that's not the way it. Well, yeah, I know it's not supposed yeah. to look like that. Yeah. Well, I certainly might seem a bit lazy not even wanting to use Amazon Prime. The replacement screens on there might be of dubious quality. PSP 3000. These dinky videos are getting very expensive lately. 30 bucks? Two stars on Amazon, are you kidding me? I don't, I'm not gonna trust that for a second. What are, what are the ratings on this? It's in Spanish. I don't know what it says. Kelly dad. De de defectuosa. Okay, well that's, 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 that, that pro bad. that's probably Spanish for defective. That's probably accurate. <laughs> like, I can believe that. After promising Austin I'd get a replacement screen to replace our replacement. Fine. And I promise I won't break the new one. Mm-hmm. Likely story. For the sake of the content, we are going to do it this way, but obviously don't ruin PSPs just to fix them. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Now that I'm an expert PSP opener, it only took a few moments to get our donor console open and our new slash used screen free. Screen is free. Okay, 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 okay. So I pushed forward, hopped it over onto our refurbished PSP, and then, okay, we're good. <laughs> So it was a screen problem. So I think if I had to hazard a guess, what went wrong with the other screen versus what I just did was, surprise, surprise, this flex cable right here is very delicate. It's super thin and I probably just hit it in a weird way when I was trying to finagle it into place. Probably scratched it a little too much and the little leads on here probably just, I don't know, got kinked to a point where they just don't work anymore. It's a shame, but at the very least we got a working screen now and most importantly, uh, nothing else is broken. However, just as I fixed one problem, another one had emerged and this one kind of hurts. Just when I thought things were going fine, I've run into a major issue. There's a UMD in here, it is spinning, but it sounds like the drive is having issues reading the game. There's almost this rhythmic pattern to its scanning and it's just not doing anything at all. Could it be the solder joint? Oh man, I don't know. That's really hard to diagnose. In any case, that's certainly not normal. Okay, so from this point, I think there are a few ways that I can proceed. One, I can undo a lot of the work that I just did, which I don't think is a lot. It'd just be time consuming more than anything. I can also 
take out our new UMD drive and put in the old one that I know works, albeit it is loud, or I can be lazy and just commit to the fact that inevitably I'm going to have to install software mods on this anyway and will be running ROMs because I will 100% be doing that over playing UMD games anyway. I mean, it's not that much work. The thing is, I really only have one UMD that I'm going to play on this thing, and it's the one that I grew up with, Need for Speed Rivals. But I could just get a ROM of this and play it on the memory stick, and it'd be totally fine. I need to make a decision quick. Uh, oh my god, ugh. Oh. Three days later. At long last, here is the finished product. My refurbished PSP 3000. And I think it looks pretty sharp. I'm happy that I went with the translucent green. It's a great pop of color. The white buttons on the front add some good contrast to break things up a bit. And while I'm going back and forth on whether or not I like these red shoulder buttons, because it makes the color scheme look a bit like Christmas, I'll say that how the color actually appears through the transparent plastic is cool. It almost looks like taillights on a car. Beyond the color, this shell from AliExpress is actually very high quality, at least on the exterior details. I specifically chose this one because all of the logos and engravings on it look properly OEM, at least from the website. And yeah, in person, it does look very spot on. Transplanting the components onto this new shell did require some minor improv improvisation here and there since it wasn't 100% like the Sony shell, but it is par for the course with third-party parts like this, especially since the PSP has been discontinued for quite a while. And even still, the fit and finish on this looks really nice. Now, if you look at the back here, you might notice that there is no UMD inserted. And that's because I've decided to turn a blind eye to my drive replacement issues, lean into the failure, and proceed with without looking back. While it sucks that the console isn't fully functioning so that I can play Need for Speed Underground like nature intended, I'd rather not tempt fate by doing a secondary deep teardown to trace the problem when I otherwise have a working functioning console. And honestly, this is a far cry from being the end of the world. For one, I can move on knowing that our original UMD drive that came with this PSP should in fact still work, perhaps with a little bit of elbow grease and actual grease. Lathering up the components in there should remedy most of the egregious screeching noises that I heard a few weeks ago. Secondly, I also have the other donor PSP that Austin lent me that also does have a confirmed UMD drive working as well that I could swap in to this console. But really, the huff of copium here is that I've installed custom firmware so that I can play whatever games I want right from the memory card. Man, I haven't done this maybe since like high school with my PSP 1000, but compared to back then, hacking a PSP these days is so easy. I'll link the guides I used in the description below, but it took me all of like two minutes to do, and now I am able to load all of the old ISOs that I've had sitting around in cold storage for at least over a decade. Using a micro SD card to memory stick duo adapter, as well as a fast micro SD card, you can dump tons of games on here in no time. That being said, it's really awesome that I can get back to some very nostalgic titles, such as Project Diva Extend, which is probably one of the first games I played in my anime fandom. This was essentially a very bare bones rhythm game with a lot of really cool music. And I gotta say, the new screen that we installed here looks miles better than the old one that we were dealing with, even though I did probably break something in the reinstallation of the old screen. This one isn't flickering, the color is way better. So I think even if I did put it in right, it was probably going to go out at some point. So I'm happy that we did a screen replacement. 
Oh man, I still got it. And a game like this is really good to test our buttons as well, because a lot of it is dependent on timing, though I'm not doing great right now because I'm talking to camera. But um, our buttons feel really good, especially for a lot of the notes that require you to press both the D-pad and the interface buttons. So I'm actually really happy with how all of that turned out. We didn't really break any of the inputs in the process, which is one of the things that I was worried about, though I guess there's not really much to mess up, but you never know. Another game that I played a lot growing up on the PSP was Gran Turismo. Now, it's been a while, and there have been a bunch of entries in the series since this one has come out to the point where I honestly don't remember it a whole lot, but I imagine a game like Gran Turismo, which has decent graphics traditionally, would also be a great way to see how our screen is. And oh my god, look at all of these courses, the throwbacks, wow! <laughs> <laughs> Let's do Trial Mountain. This is the one that I absolutely played the most. Oh yeah, that is definitely Trial Mountain. <laughs> Man, the graphics that you can get on the PSP are seriously impressive for the time. I mean, while the goal was to make a PS2, but in your pocket, it's certainly not PS2 graphics, but man, for something that you can play like on your commute to work or to school, man, this is nice. Look at all of the lighting effects. The 3D looks seriously nice too. Sony was really onto something with this console back in the early 2000s. And also, while we're talking about the graphics, I do like the way that our new screen looks. Actually, looking at it, the only gripe that I have with this shell that we bought off of AliExpress is that, and I didn't really notice it before, but there is a nick on the inner side of our screen lens. If I pull up our PS quit menu here, it almost kind of looks like a speck of dust, but that's actually just a nick. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a shame that that's there, but also when you're in the heat of gameplay, it's hardly noticeable, especially at full brightness. Downloading custom firmware on your PSP allows you to play a bunch of different games, but there were also a lot of wacky applications that existed on both UMD and on the PSN store that added a bit of convenience to your life, especially with add-on accessories like this GPS module, which I was able to buy with the box in 2024. Plus, I was able to find a navigation app that apparently still works some 15 to 20 years after release. And so we are going to try to navigate around town using this GPS module and my new PSP. In 2024, what? <laughs> All right, so we are in the company car and I have our PSP set up with the GPS module and Go Explore, which is our navigation app. So the idea here is that we can actually use this to get from point A to point B with turn by turn directions and whatnot. And supposedly all the GPS stuff still works. So let's try it out. Ah, the classic PSP sound. Wow, that is very 2008. <laughs> <laughs> now, in doing my research with this, the only issue with Go Explore is that the actual points of interest are still locked to like 2008 or 2009. Just keeping that in mind, you probably won't find your newest boba spot around the corner or anything like that. But as long as the business has existed for like 10 or 15 years, it's probably in here. Well, first of all, let's just look at the map and see what that looks like. Yeah, just standard GPS. I don't like, I don't know what else I was expecting here. So I can change my view here we have a bird's eye one right now if i hit square it's more of a pov if you will which i think will actually center itself once we start navigating yeah i mean let's just go find some points of interest and navigate pretty sure they had best buys back then oh they absolutely did best buy the first one that shows up is the one that's probably a couple of exits away on the freeway hit go and there we are let's just set off and uh see how well this go explore app actually is Oh, okay. So there are not only turn by turn directions, but a very pleasant sounding British lady is telling us where to go as well. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this looks so proper. And we get voice turn by turn directions too. Yo. 
Thank you. Oh, was I not supposed to do that? I think I, I just didn't listen to it. I misunderstood what it wanted. All right, it wanted us to go on the freeway. And I'll be real, like the speed that it's reading on here is pretty accurate to what I'm seeing on my speedometer. So is the PSP GPS module and Go Explore actually usable in 2024? Surprisingly, yes. Something else cool that I found is if you go into the settings and hit GPS, It'll actually give you a readout of the satellites it's connecting to and kind of the connection status, as well as your altitude or elevation and the speed that you're traveling with as well. The level of information you get might not be as robust, but it's still really surprising how much it actually gives you in terms of accuracy and information. Apparently we are 161 yards over sea level. <laughs> Why is it in yards? So the GPS module retailed, I think, in Japan for around 6,000 yen, which is about in at least today's dollars, which is not what it was before, is roughly around 50 bucks. Same thing can be said about the Go Explore application. I bought the UMD. I paid about $60 for that, and a lot of that was really shipping from Europe because uh, I had to import it. So for like $110, should you go out and buy a PSP navigation device for your actual daily use? Probably not, but I think as a novelty, I mean, come on, this thing is kind of rad, right? <laughs> oh man, yeah, this is actually doing it. The Best Buy is literally up ahead. Ayo, hey, it's right here. I overshot the entrance. Talk about the most 2008 thing that I've done in a long time. We navigated to Best Buy on my PSP using a PSP GPS module in a 2018 Toyota 4Runner that might as well be a 2008 4Runner because they never really changed. The only thing I have to do now is buy like a Nokia or something in here and it'll be all set. Yo, dang, this was an interesting experience. This is wild. The fact that there's something connectivity related on the PSP that still works in this day and age is honestly a blessing. Obviously this console has been long out of support from Sony. And most importantly, I was trying to connect over Wi-Fi to the networks over in the studio and it would not connect to anything. So the fact that I can actually access GPS satellites here in 2024 is probably the most, I don't even know how to describe it. I'm just, I'm just dumbfounded that it works. It, there's no reason why I wouldn't, but it still does. And that makes me very happy. And that, my friends, was refurbing a PSP in 2024. Let me know how you thought I did in the comments below, as well as what color you would pick. And otherwise, I'll catch y'all in the next one.